Yeah, I mean, I imagine opening up for Breaking Ben every night, like that's gotta be financially a lot easier. Because well, actually, um, I, I, I followed along uh, behind the tour in a Kia Sorento. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah. Hey, it's me, Jesse Lee, and today on the show, we got Keith Wallen from the band Breaking Benjamin. And he's not just from Breaking Benjamin, he also has a pretty prosperous solo career, and he's written songs for a lot of your favorite bands like Fuel and Three Days Grace. But we dive into how he actually joined Breaking Benjamin to begin with, and the uh, imposter syndrome that he feels sometimes that I think we can all relate to, and also three things that we kind of both think are necessary to make it in a, whether it be a rock star or actor, actress, comedian, you know, whatever creative field you're going into, there's three elements that we feel like are very important. So you gotta stick around for those. And uh, we also talk about the first and maybe last time he's done ayahuasca. Uh, that conversation gets pretty wild, it's pretty fun stuff. Also, there's a little bit of a hiccup with the recording. Uh, at some point, the podcast kind of cuts out and we had to start over in a certain spot. But you're not going to notice it. You're not even going to pick up on it because I have an amazing editor. I have an incredible editor that edited all around this. But if you do notice it, make sure to give him grief in the comments section, okay? Also, while you're in the comments section, make sure to leave some nice comments and or some mean ones too if you want. It's up to you. Hit some like buttons. Make sure to follow this podcast. If you're on Spotify, please. It takes you like two seconds. It does so much for me. It makes me so happy. It makes me tingle in my pants. And uh, you can also subscribe if you're listening on YouTube. And also, if you're on Spotify, leave a five-star review if you can. If you, if you got another few seconds of free time in your day. I know I'm asking a lot. I know I'm asking a lot. I'm asking you to push a lot of buttons, but I pushed a lot of buttons to make this podcast happen for you. So I think uh, it's only fair, right? Right. All right. Let's dive into it. Okay. Dude, I appreciate you taking the time to chat with me. Uh, I know you're headed out on tour this week, right? Tomorrow, actually. Um, yeah, it's uh, it's been a wild weekend with just songs coming out and having to pack and everything else. But, uh, I, yeah, I, I try not to complain because I've, I've worked really hard to just be able to play music and get out there and tour. So it's, uh, yeah, it's cool. Yeah. You guys are going out with Daughtry and catch your breath, right? Mm hmm. Yep. Very cool. Very cool. I like to consider Daughtry my, uh, my doppelganger. I feel like we've got a lot of the same kind of like vibes, you know? <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> no, that's awesome. Good, dude. I, I'm, I'm excited, man. Yeah, I've I've known Brian, uh, their their guitar player, for a long time, and and I've met Daughtry once before, and uh, and he was super nice. So I'm stoked that you know we're finally doing this tour together. Yeah, he's really cool. Actually, I had him on my podcast uh, about two months ago. Now he's he's a really good dude. I like that dude. I like Catch Your Breath a lot too. That band's that's they're onto something. I really like what they got going on. Yeah, that's they're really good. Have. It's it it's gonna be it's gonna be a fun one. I think. Yeah. Who is, uh, what do you think has been your favorite band to tour with? And I mean, I know you've done a ton of tours. So it's probably hard to like narrow it down to one, but is there any one that comes to mind when you think about like, oh shit, that was a great tour? Gosh. Um, you know, I, Alice in Chains was pretty, was pretty awesome. Uh, yeah. I've been such a huge fan of, of that band just my whole life. I feel, I feel like, and, uh, but just, you know, seeing Jerry walking around every day and just, he was so, <sighs> gracious and cool and i mean the whole band is cool but mm -hmm. uh man it was just it was that was just that was just one of them that was one for the ages as far as like my my uh musical career goes and memory banks and and you know having you know talking about it later to different people i'm just that's going to be one for sure was that the first band that you like <laughs> toured with that it was like almost like a, a holy shit is this real life kind of moment for you like this is what i get to do for me, definitely. Um, I, obviously, you know, touring with Corn was pretty amazing, like that. Also, but uh, but with Alice in Chains, I just you know, I I I was just a super fan of them when when I was growing up, and and uh, to be able to just you know, I, I, I remember there was a sound check or a line check or something, and uh, I was talking to Jerry's tech. And, and he was just like, yeah, man, you know, here, try, try this. And he like handed me the guitar and it was like plugged in to, you know, his rig and his whole amp and sound and everything. He was just like, play something. I was like, bring, I just hit like a G chord and dude, it sounded so good. Just the tone uh -huh. of everything. 
I was like, this is so incredible. Um, it was definitely one of those just crazy. How did I get here? And like, yeah. some, surely someone's going to come up behind me and be like, yo, you can't be here. Get the fuck out of here. You know, uh, <laughs> what are you doing so out here? <laughs> it was, it, yeah, dude, it was, it was awesome. I mean, my whole life, I feel like that is, I feel that kind of, you know, imposter syndrome, whatever they call it. Um, I feel that sometimes, but, uh, but you know, also, you know, I know that I've, I've, I've worked hard to, to get to these moments like this and, and, uh, you know, where I may have lacked in, in talent and, and stuff like that. I, I know that I'm, I'm a persistent motherfucker <laughs> like, and I just keep at it, you know? Yeah. I always say, and like, I have no science to back this up. This is my own personal philosophy, but I feel like in order to make it and really anything, but especially like this kind of business, like you have to have yeah. a little bit of talent, a little bit of luck and a little bit of consistency. And I feel like you at least have to have two out of the three. You can't just have one. You have to have at least sure. two out of the three in order to get to that next level, you know? Oh yeah. I, I think that's so true. I mean, obviously, you know, luck 100%, you know, mm -hmm. but, but I feel like, you know, uh, you know, what's that thing that says, you know, when preparation meets, you know, there's all that stuff makes sense. You know, I mm -hmm. feel like, you know, you, you work hard enough to, to set yourself up to be lucky. Uh, oh, yeah. When the time comes, you know, that's the thing. People always say like, oh, man, he's so lucky instead of saying, oh, look how hard he worked. You know, that that's always a phrase. Like instead of saying like people only see how the cake is finished on the plate in front of them. They don't see how long it took you to go to culinary school or baking school to learn how to even make the cake to begin with, let alone actually make the cake. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, for sure. And I mean. You know, there's, there's always going to be just, I mean, we're living in that, we're living in it right now where there's going to be people on the internet that just never give you, you know, credit and, and you know, mm -hmm. for anything, you know, yeah. um, that's just kind of nature of the world we live in right now, uh, which is unfortunate, but, uh, you know, at least I think we realize that you're like, this is just the world now. And you just kind of, <laughs> you kind of just yeah. kind of keep, keep moving through it, you know, but, um, yeah, I feel like the people that that get online to just trash people and not, uh, you know, just to talk shit, it, it's like it's part of the downfall of the human civilization. I think those, those <laughs> yeah, are the people that are, that are part of it. <laughs> yeah, it's a weird existence to have to wake <clears throat> up and like that's your day. It's just to shit talk online and comment mean things to people. <laughs> yeah, it's wild, man. Uh, you know, so. Uh, for all those people that talk shit, I'm sorry. Whatever happened, I'm sorry <laughs> or, that that happened to you. Sorry, who hurt you? How did yeah. you uh, come about? Like, how did you join Breaking Benjamin to begin with? So I was in um, a few other bands before Breaking Ben. One was called Copper um, that I had in eight for eight years in Knoxville, Tennessee. We had opened for Breaking Ben for a couple shows there during the We Are Not Alone album cycle. Uh, I'm dating myself a little bit here. Um, <laughs> but, uh, and then, uh, I was in a ba another band called Adelita's Way, and we also did some touring with Breaking Ben. And, um, I think whenever Ben kind of had that point where, uh, you know, he had his falling out or disagreement with the, with the other guys, uh, he was looking for new players. And, and, you know, I think somehow he just, I don't know, remembered me. And it, it, it was right coinciding when I was kind of, uh, leaving Adelita's way. And I kind of wrote this thing on Facebook, thanking the fans in my, my man, my resignation manifesto. <laughs> uh, and, you know, I think he saw it and he was just like, Oh man, you know, I remember this dude. And, um, he reached out through Facebook and, uh, you know, we we're kind of like, man, maybe we, we could do something. And he was like, send me some videos. If you play in some of the songs, I'm like, okay. And then I sent the videos in, we talked on the phone and then I didn't hear back for a bit. I, I think I heard back initially like, Hey, great job. You sound great on the videos. Um, I'll get back to you. And then some time went on and, and from and by that, I mean a good five months or something. So I'm like, I guess I just didn't get it yeah. or whatever, you know? So I was kind of like looking on to, to what the next thing was, you know, I was just working I was living in LA at the time. Uh, you know, maybe I started a solo band or whatever. And then Jason Rao, who I'd known previously, uh, you know, uh, just from different stuff, Tennessee band, you know, he's in red and, you know, Tennessee guys, uh, kind of in the same circle there a little bit. He hit me up. He's like, yo, dude, uh, this breaking bench thing's kind of happening. And I think, you know, I think we are still, you know, we're looking for another guitar player, vocalist or something you still want to 
be into? And I'm like, hell yeah, let's do it. You know, what's funny yeah. is that when I spoke to Ben, I think he, he, I think he thought that I wasn't interested and he, to, oh, this, really? to this day, he says that when we spoke, I just wasn't interested, but you know how it is. You're trying to play it cool. Yeah. You know, it's you like, it's like, strong. yeah, it's like when you meet a, you know, a girl for the first time, right. you don't be like, Oh, nice to meet you. And then you text them right away. Hey, right. just, you know, and By I, mean, way, I think like, I love you. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I was in the shower. I thought I heard the phone ring. I thought it might have been you. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, you know, yeah, I was, I was kind of playing it cool, but I guess I played it too cool. And he was too like, cool. he doesn't want to do this shit. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, but, but it worked out. And, uh, you know, Jason was like, Hey, you know, we're going to, we're going to do this. Let's, and then I got on the phone with Ben again and we let's, let's, you know, get together and really get face to face with everybody and, and play some stuff. And, uh, and so that's what we did. And, uh, then we went through this like six month, <laughs> three to six month, like, I call it Breaking Benjamin Boot Camp, where we just <laughs> learned we learned the catalog and played every song and every harmony and every word and every little nuance and mm-hmm. and, uh, and it was it was challenging, but it was it was fun, you know. So, and here we are, ten years later. I can't believe it's been ten years, uh, which proves that you know we're having fun and that I'm having a good time. So, it's a good yeah. thing. And it proves that you uh, you passed the official audition. Then, if you stuck around for ten years, it wasn't a one off thing. <laughs> I guess I'm really. I guess I made it in the band. I guess. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, was it super intimidating to join like such an already established like entity like Breaking Ben? I think so. Definitely. You know. I mean. Um, y- you know. You think about like, gosh, this 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 band's been around. You know, for a while. There's there's a whole there's a whole career. There's a whole success story. I mean, obviously, there's there's previous members mm-hmm. there's all this stuff you know there's these shoes to fill you know you want to do it justice you know um but i think once the initial kind of thing came out and uh you know the, and the fans were just like they realized hey this the band's back and man they they could not have been more welcoming uh to to us new guys and, and you know ben the same thing you know he was just so thrilled to just have the band going again and having us be a part of it you know instantly just like hey let's let's do some writing, you know, let's write some stuff. And, uh, and I was just like, man, this is amazing. And, um, uh, and yeah. it's, it really has been great. And the, the fans have been incredible. I know that's, of course, that's something just cliche to say. It's all about the fans, but it really it is. is. They could have, yeah. they, they could have just been like, nah, that this isn't, but they really, they really were just, uh, amazing. And they still are. Mm-hmm. Uh, so we're very, we're very grateful. Uh, and I'm very grateful, uh, for all of them and this whole thing. Very cool. Yeah, I used to be in this band with a guy who was in a band with the original drummer for Breaking Benjamin, and like that was he he left my buddy's band to go join Breaking Ben, and that was always his claim to fame. Oh, wow. like, he, he wrote that for like twenty years. <laughs> you know, like, oh yeah, I yeah. used to be in a band with the guy from Breaking Ben. Like, <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. Uh, oh yeah. Uh, so aside from your, uh, you know, aside from playing guitar and Breaking Ben, which also I always called it, I didn't know you can shorten to Breaking Ben. I like saying that a lot better. That feels yeah. more natural to say. I'm going to start doing that. I'm going to I'm gonna take your lead on that. <laughs> but uh, uh, yeah. aside from that, and uh, obviously having a super prominent solo career and writing music for other people, you know, you got your hands busy when it comes to writing music. How do you know when you write a song, like where it's going to go? Like who is it going to be a fit for? <clears throat> You know, I, I, I get asked that a lot and, and honestly, um, it's, I just really treat it, uh, you know, as a, a project by project basis, you know, okay. I, I think, you know, uh, you know, obviously if you're working on something that's, you know, you're, you're thinking for breaking Benjamin, uh, obviously Ben's going to be singing it, you know, mm-hmm. you know, that what his kind of wheelhouse is, um, you know, the band has a certain style that, that you don't really want to stray too much from. I mean, obviously you want to, uh, you know, evolve a little bit and modernize, but, um, you know, so, so I don't know, it's, it's kind of, uh, it's kind of easy to kind of, uh, you know, stick to that kind of thing. But, you know, with, with my stuff, I, I don't know, I, I have, I have so much freedom to do anything so much, so much room for activities. Uh, <laughs> you know, I, it's, yeah. it's, it's really awesome to, you know, kind of just be able to do whatever, say whatever, and, 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 yeah. you know, talk about, uh, you know, write songs, stuff that's just from my soul, from my heart. And mm-hmm. so, you know, but there's no, there's no real rules really, you know, um, it's going off. I don't know. Yeah, man. You know, and obviously, you know, if I do any, you know, writing with different bands or whatever, you know, obviously I, I, I love that by the way, I love the opportunity to, to, uh, 
collaborate with, with people, um, you know, because I just feel like there's so many talented people and I'm just like, man, I'm so grateful to get in the room with some of these talented people mm-hmm. just to learn as much as I can, you know, uh, and I've, I've worked with some really talented people and, um, you know, grateful for them, uh, and, and to them for letting me be a part of their stuff. But, um, yeah, it's, uh, you know, you want, if you're writing with something like, uh, writing, you know, something like that, you know, you want, uh, you want to, you know, put the best foot forward, try to come up with the coolest thing and something that they would feel good about. And, mm-hmm. uh, it's like their thing, you know? So, um, yeah, man, it's just, uh, it's just fun. I'm, I'm, uh, yeah. I, have I you like ever, this. or go ahead. Well, I was just saying, have you ever written a song like for you? Like maybe you started off writing for yourself and like some of the guys in Breaking Ben heard <laughs> it and they're like, Oh dude, we got to use this or like vice versa where you've like, written something for somebody and you're like, Oh shit, I kind of want to keep this for myself. I don't know if I want to give this away. Yeah. I basically all the coolest ideas I keep for myself. Um, <laughs> That's the way to do it, it's, baby. It's, Look out it's, for number it's, one. It, it's way <laughs> easy. Yeah. Yeah. No, this is, this is so easy. All the good <laughs> shit goes to me. Uh, no, you, you know, I, I think it's kind of like, you know, you kind of know going into it. Look, this is, this session is for this, this session is for that. Obviously if something doesn't get used, maybe it can be, you know, retooled somewhere else or, yeah. or, or reuse somewhere or spark something else. But, um, uh, yeah, that's kind of how we do it. Has there been like, uh, any kind of project or genre that you've been wanting to try that you haven't gone after yet? Cause you've done so many different kinds of styles. Like, has there been like, like maybe like a, I don't know, like a hip hop album or something, something crazy that you've like thought about doing, but you haven't pulled the trigger on yet? No, definitely. I, I couldn't wrap myself out of a paper bag. I, uh, <laughs> Yeah, I, I, no, I, I think I'm pretty much doing everything that I, I have always wanted to do and try. Um, you know, even kind of my, my earlier releases, um, it, and on the solo stuff, you know, I kind of was dabbling a little bit on just alternative, maybe, mm-hmm. maybe kind of more chill stuff, but you know, it'll always come back to rock. And yeah, uh, I mean, maybe, maybe country just because I'm from, you know, West Virginia and I live in Tennessee and I'm, I'm, you know, I've, I've grown up with so much country music and, you know, nineties country and stuff is like, I'll hear that stuff. Now I used to, I used to hate it, but it's like, you know, you grow up and your, your taste buds change. Oh, and, you know, and now it's like, it's kind of happened to me like musically too. I'm kind of like, mm-hmm. man, I, I kind of, that Alan Jackson song slaps. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know? well, I don't know. I, I don't know what's happening. Less- I think we end up being less of uh, dicks as we get older too, as far as our musical taste, we get less like zeroed in on like what we like and we, we were able to yeah. branch out a little bit more. I mean, some people don't, some people go worse. Some people go the other way, <laughs> you know, <But> I think <laughs> yeah. there's a lot of people that tend to like be more open to new genres and stuff. And like the country thing, yeah. I think that'd be a great fit for you. Cause even like the new song, the wolf that you just dropped, like I definitely yeah. feel like some crossover appeal on that song. Like the, the verses kind of have like this soulful vibe. And then the chorus almost feels like a, almost like a jelly roll kind of country rock, like big anthemic, like banger. And I, I think that that definitely, I can see you going more in that direction as well. I appreciate it. Yeah. I think you said it uh, best. We, we kind of, we become more open-minded for sure. Um, and yeah, like you said, some people just, they just dig in further <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> to their dickness. <laughs> right, uh, right. But no, yeah, I, I, uh, I really appreciate that, man. Um, yeah. I think that the new song, the wolf, it's, it is kind of one that is, uh, the most maybe, you know, able to kind of, uh, you know, touch in on that a little bit, but, uh, yeah. but yeah, man, dude, I, you know, if, if, if something started taking off on some other different chart, I sure wouldn't be upset about it. It won't hurt. That's for sure, <laughs> man. It will not hurt. You wrote another song with, uh, Weston Cage, the son of Nicholas Cage. It was called the wolf as well. Was there any yeah. kind of like deeper connection between those two songs? It just happens to be the title. Yeah, not at all. Yeah, I know. I like to keep things nice and confusing for everybody. Um, <laughs> yeah, no, that was uh, no relation whatsoever. Mm. Um, that was one of those, uh, you know, sessions uh, during COVID where uh, my publishing company basically is like, hey, you know, this this guy's making some music and, you know, he's needing some songs. Would you want to write with him? And I'm like, I, absolutely. And then, you know, we did some Zoom sessions and I was like, man, this guy's uh, super nice and, and super down to, to try to create some cool stuff. And and so that's just, that's one of the songs we, we come up with. Um, and then, and then here we are 
few years later, I have another song called The Wolf. I know. I'm Very just cool. like, dang it. I know. There's a lot of wolf songs out right now. I think yeah. San Antonio, hoping... they have one too. Oh, I yeah, know. that's right. <laughs> yeah. But, and, and I love that song too. And I love that band. And I love And you've you written with them. Mm hmm. Yeah. Super. I would uh, love if it was some kind of like Keith Wallen, like cinematic universe where like the wolf is just this <laughs> reoccurring character and like the songs and stuff. Dude, you're, I think you're onto something. There I'm, you go. Dude, I'm down. I'm down if they're down. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Anyone <laughs> listening or watching, by the way, Weston Cage, of course, is the son of Nicolas Cage. And Nicolas Cage is also a big metalhead, right? He's super in a, like, I think, like, heavy, like, real heavy stuff, though, like black metal and stuff. Oh, dang. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, so the, the song The Wolf, part of the uh, cinematic Keith Wallen universe, <laughs> is on the upcoming album Infinity Now, dropping on May 3rd, correct? <laughs> Correct. Yes. Awesome. Yes. Just uh, just released that one, uh, and then we. I think we, there's another song. Uh, uh, yeah, there's a, there's a bunch of stuff coming. So yeah, the the album comes out May third. You know, we got some tours coming up. Uh, we got some Breaking Benjamin tours. I am uh, I'm going to be a busy boy here uh, here in a look starting tomorrow. Actually. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Do you have a, a favorite song off the new record yet? I mean, I know you probably haven't got a chance to play all of them live and whatnot, but do you have one that you're like you're super excited about? You know, I gosh, I have uh, I have one that I liked. Um, I, I mean, obviously, I like them all. Um, I was really excited for everyone to hear the wolf mm-hmm. um, because it is so um, so different, I guess, compared to my other music, but but still, you know, living in the same universe. I feel like. Um, oh yeah, I was it's really been my excited. favorite personally. I appreciate it, man. Thank you, uh, and 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 I think uh, just the reaction that uh, that I've gotten from it was just overwhelming. You know, I I, I was in Nashville uh, when the song came out, and I had to get up early and drive back here um, home. So so I I didn't get to see like all the stuff and all the like comments and everything but mm-hmm. then when i got home i like opened it up and it, my phone like exploded i was like oh my god so i was just like blown away and just completely just beside myself just like holy shit man this is really cool and i'm i was super super grateful and and I, i'm actually gonna make like a thank you video about it oh, just great. to thank everybody just because yeah. uh the reaction was so great so so yeah, I, I was I was stoked for everyone to hear that. Um, there's a couple other songs. There's one called uh, "Don't Fall Asleep" that I'm super stoked on. There's a couple songs that aren't on the record, um, but I think may be revisited at some point uh, that I'm okay. super stoked on too. So so I've got some stuff lining up for after. So um, yeah, man, I'm just I'm just pumped, man. I'm pumped to uh, to be having having this amazing partnership with Rise for this release and. Uh, it's really been great so far. So, what yeah. inspired the title "Infinity"? Now feels like a Buzz Lightyear reference or something. <laughs> yeah, I know it does sound kind of out there, and honestly, it really is kind of out there. Um, I so I took ayahuasca probably. Oh I'd hell yeah! Maybe, <laughs> maybe, maybe yeah, yeah. I know, right? With, I mean, even if you you hear the song, you listen to the song "Infinity," you anybody would probably be like, "This guy's done some psychedelics in his life." Jeez. <laughs> Um, and that's exactly it. I, I, I had this, uh, trip for those of you that don't know ayahuasca, it's DMT and it's a, it's a, it's basically harvested down into this tea. Uh, and it's, it's more well known kind of in the Amazon, South America, people will go down there, uh, to have therapy sessions with it, with these shaman. And, uh, I was able to kind of, uh, have an opportunity to, to take some with some people and a shaman was there and it was the whole real deal. And uh, you drink this tea and you just trip for like 10 hours or something. And in this trip, and I'm not a big drug person or anything, uh, you know, but for some reason, I just was like, I just want to, yeah, I just want to see what this is. You know, yeah. you, you, I'd seen documentaries and they mm-hmm. call it the, the, the God molecule. And, um, but you're supposed to take it and you're supposed to deal with, you know, your hidden trauma or or non-hidden trauma and just it opens your eyes and all this stuff and granted i mean i'm not a doctor so disclaimer disclaimer. (laughs) Uh, but uh but it 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 helps a lot of people supposedly and and i just gave it a shot and man i saw all kinds of crazy stuff i saw the very first thing i saw i closed my eyes and i'm sitting there for like five minutes and i'm like just i just see total darkness blackness and then i see just 
eye, an eyeball right in my face. And I'm like, what the fuck is this? And then it slowly starts to pan out and it's just, and it's like a wolf. It's a wolf's face, like right oh, looking shit. dead in, in my eyes. And I'm just like, I don't know what any of this means, but yeah. all right, cool. So, I mean, there's, there's that there's, you know, I have a song called dear father that is a really, uh, special song for me and it was a hard song to write it's going to be an even harder song to perform um about my uh father who passed away in 1999 and it directly links back to this ayahuasca trip and and Mm. i i was i was sitting there in this this you know trip and i'm like looking at this light i mean this sounds so cliche but there was like a light at the end of the tunnel as they say and and it but it really was it was like this light and there was like flashing and the light just kept flashing and it was like figures like walking between me and the light. And then finally one of the figures stopped in between me and the light and came toward me. And it was just, he was standing there and it was like this golden silhouette. And I was just like, what is, I was like, this is amazing. And I felt so much just gratitude that I decided to take this stuff and, and feel this feeling. And I felt like, I was like, is this my father? you know, trying to communicate through, you know, through the universe, Mm. you know, and even a line in the song, you know, I see your face, a silhouette through time and space, you know, it's directly from this trip. So there's a lot of things that kind of tie back to it. Um, but it was, it was, it was definitely, uh, a a memorable experience for sure. It sounds like it, man. Do you think you'll ever do it again? Probably not. (laughs) Yeah. Just the one again. Yeah. It's like, yeah. After all that, like, talk and it's like talking it up and i'm like i'm good yeah i mean uh, it sounds pretty intense though as amazing as it does it probably does sound like something that you would only want to do once and be like all right that was great but i, I think i got my fill <laughs> man it was to say it was a journey is an understatement i mean it was yeah. a journey uh and you you know you throw up it's it's part of the purge oh, yeah, i guess puking That's- is like a part of the whole thing right <laughs> Oh yeah. It's a part. Yeah. So, you know, and I hate throwing up. I mean, I, no, who, who does, but right, yeah. this is one of those things where you're like, damn, well, this is, um, this is going to make me throw up. So yeah. Is it, um, what makes you puke about it? Do you know, is it just cause it doesn't, it upsets your belly? Like what? <laughs> I have no idea. And, and we had to even kind of prepare, uh, and kind of stick to a certain diet, uh, mm, preparing okay. for it. Um, uh, yeah, it was, who knows? I mean, it's just straight, it's just poison. That's I'm wild. sure. Yeah, uh, I mean, I'm sure it's probably not something you're supposed to consume on a daily basis or anything like that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and, and you know, it it was it was wild. I mean, it, at one point, I'm I'm sitting there. You know, we're all kind of sitting there Indian style. You know, we're all just in our own universe. You know, you're not supposed to like interact with anyone else. Your own thing is your own thing. But I mean, the shaman is sitting there, and she was she was just like chanting this stuff and i mean i know this sounds out there but at one point oh, you're good, you know, she, I, i'm like my, my my eyes are closed and, and i can hear her like chanting and it sounded like she's like over like way the hell over here and i and i like turn and i look and i'm just like and she's like right in front of me like where she always <laughs> was the whole time and i was like i was like dude this is this is wild i mean <laughs> Um, <laughs> at, at one point, you know, everyone has like a pillow and a blanket cause you're there for a long time. So uh, eventually you just kind of lay down. Mm-hmm. And so I was like, you know, super just kind of anxiety ridden is at, at points of it. So I was like, all right, I just need to, I need to just lay down and chill out. Yeah. So other than doing ayahuasca in a desert with a shaman, uh, do you have any other plans for the uh, upcoming year? <clears throat> Man, just uh, my my main goal, and and this is kind of funny, but uh, it's true, is just trying to get people to know that I exist. That is that is my main That's thing fair. because, I uh, you know, lots of people know Breaking Benjamin, um, and and you know, some people know that uh, who the members are, and even smaller amount of people know that maybe one of the members makes his own music. So my, my goal is just to get that out there. Um, uh, I played a few shows opening for Breaking Ben in this last acoustic tour. Um, and a, a question that I would ask people, I said, you know, who all's ever heard of me? Some people would be like, yeah, who all's never heard of me in their fucking life? There'd be a shit ton of people be like, ah, I'm like, okay, well, everybody that just, you know, yelled, I've been playing guitar in the band that you came to see for the last 10 years. And I, mm-hmm. I, I get it. No one, I don't expect everybody to know all the bands 
band members and all that stuff. I, I totally get that. But, um, but I just thought it was funny. It was a funny yeah. experiment to kind of, uh, so it was an eye opening thing. So I got to get my, my name out there as much as I can and, and let people know that I exist. So that's the, that's the goal to get out there and play shows and, um, make stupid TikTok videos. Right? <laughs> Take my took us. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. I mean, I imagine opening up for breaking Ben every night, like that's gotta be taxing on you doing pulling double duty like that. But it's also from like a logistics standpoint, it's gotta make things, uh, I feel like a lot, probably financially a lot easier because like that's one less act you have to, you know, worry about. I mean, cause it's kind of big. I mean, I'm sure they're paying you extra to do that, but you're baked into the equation already. So you're there. It's one less, you know, travel you know, situation to figure out. So it's probably gonna make things a little bit, a little bit easier that way. Well, actually, um, I, I, I followed along, uh, behind the tour in a Kia Sorento. Nice. Uh, All right. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. That was, that's the joke I made uh, every yeah. night. I'm like, Hey guys, please help me out on merch. I'm following <laughs> along. Uh, but, but, but yeah, no, it, uh, it is, it, it is kind of a, a convenient thing. It's kind of a built in opener. Uh, yeah. when you look at it that way. Uh, and, and, and one thing I tried to stress too is, you know, I, I don't want any kind of success or any kind of whatever kind of thing that comes. I don't want it to be, uh, because of breaking Benjamin, mm-hmm. you know, I don't want it to be like I'm riding any coattails or anything like that. I want whatever comes to be on its own merit of my music by itself. Um, so, uh, yeah, yeah so that's, that's gotta that's be so tough. Thing. Like I, I feel for like artists, especially like when they have like famous parents and like maybe their parents were in like a famous band or something like that. It's like, you don't want to rely on your past, not even like in your case, at least these are your past successes, but in like that sure. other case, it's like, it's their parents' success that they're getting, you know, praise for. And that's gotta be tough because you want to make it on your own. You want to, like you said, get your own name out there. And, sure. but of course the most direct path to do that is to use the, Hey, I'm in this band or, Hey, I know this parent, but it's like, then you get that money ground and people are like, Oh, well, you're only this big because of this other thing that's happening. You know, dude, so true. I mean, it's like, it almost hurts in, in mm-hmm. some situation. It makes it harder. You know, cause it's, it's almost like you're just, you're, 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 uh, invisible and in, in plain sight in, yeah. in a way. Um, but you know, obviously if, if breaking Ben, uh, is going on a tour and they're like, you know, we're, we, we're looking for an opening band. Would you be interested in doing that? You can't, I can't say no to that. Cause I know I'm going to be in front of a lot of people. Mm-hmm. And, and now I know maybe a lot of people that's never heard of me. <laughs> yeah. So, so I have to take it, but. Uh, at, at the same time, it's kind of like, dang it, I want to, I want to, you know, be able to do this, uh, without, you know, without dear old, you know, dad yeah. <laughs> watching over, you know, maybe in breaking Ben, you should start wearing like a mask or something and completely like differentiate yourself, you know? So when you're opening, like, no, I'm yeah. a totally different guy. Like, I'm not the same guy in breaking Ben. <laughs> yeah, sure. And I mean, yeah. that seems to, that, that seems to be, uh, you know, an original thing to do. I'll, I'll put a mask on. No yeah. one else wears masks. No, uh, out there Never in music, mm-hmm. I'll, ha- I'll come in on a wolf. No one else has a wolf song. <laughs> uh, dude, it'll be great. <laughs> dude, when you have your next big headline tour, you got to come out on some kind of majestic wolf. I don't know how to, like the, I don't know, like the logistics and like, you know, and PETA involved and everything like that, but there's got to be a way for you to come out on giant wolf. I think it'd be great. I'm so in on this. I'm so down. Yeah. Let's <laughs> whoever we need to call. Let's do this. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Keith, what is the best place for everyone to connect with you on all the social media? So I would say probably, uh, Instagram. I, I have, I have all of them. Uh, mm-hmm. but at KJ Wallen, uh, is my handle. Instagram is my handle for Twitter it's, or X now. Yeah. Uh, also TikTok. Uh, I'm on YouTube. I'm on Deezer. I'm on Spotify. I'm on Apple music. I'm on, I'm on all the things. Uh, Are you on OnlyFans yet? That's a big question. You know, I'm more of a footfinder.com kind of guy. <laughs> uh, but, uh, but you know, hey, never say never, right? Yeah. <laughs> when times get tough, you never know. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, you um, got to pivot. Yeah, yeah you, you know? got you got exactly. You got to move <laughs> with the industry. You never know where it's going, man. Uh, <laughs> well, on that aspect, I have been Jesse Lee. All you viewers and listeners can reach me at Jesse Lee on TikTok and Instagram at Jesse Lee on, or I'm sorry, at Jesse Lee Show on X. And if you're enjoying this episode, make sure to share it with somebody that doesn't suck. All right. Take it easy now and uh, bye bye.